Yo, welcome to Alive and Let Jive. He's Matt. And he's Kyle. Welcome to the episode, everybody. Oh, yeah. So we have an extravaganza, a fun, fun uh, band to discuss for you guys today. Yeah, this is a blast from the past. This is... Do you want to do the honors? Do you want to do the honors? Of- the honors, should we like um, kind of like talk about them before we say exactly who it is, or we just get right into it? Mm. This is a band that, from our childhood, probably like the incarnation of our friendship, yeah. uh, is someone that like we've always been like... Um, oh, they are so fun! Yeah, like 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 we've been into, been fans of. of uh, we'll get more into that in a oh second. God, yeah. Um, but um, then they've always been a lot of fun. Unfortunately, this is a band that is not around anymore. But yeah, which we're gonna, is crazy. But um, as we always do in these podcast episodes, we're going to talk a lot about their live performances. We're going to watch some videos. We're going to check them out and see how. Uh, fun it would have been and it will potentially be if the say the band ever reunites and decides to play shows again yeah i really hope that they form back up again because they do have interviews where they talk about reforming again or at least like the basis of the band the basis of the band talking that if they ever do reform then yes he would be a member of the band because die hard so not to continue to pussyfoot around the, the band in question. Yeah. Let's do it like syllables. Ready? The band is Blood. Blood. <laughs> Hound. <laughs> gang. Bloodhound gang. <laughs> you can't say it. Try. <laughs> but. But. Hound. What? <laughs> Guy. Yes. We're going to talk about Bloodhound Gang Blood this episode, Gang. everybody. This is, the, I, this is Pride and Joy kind of episode. I love the Bloodhound Gang. Yeah. Okay. Um, Even though they're not always 100% accepted by many people, I think they're funny. I don't know. Just yeah. something about them. Whatever. Right. Yeah. So when, when we talk about them and watch the videos, we're, I, we'll have to kind of keep it through the filter of like this may have may or may not have aged well. Oh. You know, we'll, we'll see how we react to the videos as we watch them. Um, we picked out some videos with like minimal, like just like giant, like all we, these are songs that we liked in the past um, from like their big hits to like um, deeper cuts. Oh, yeah. Especially since, you know, some of their golden stuff is a lot of times on the sidelines. You know, that goes for any bit. Sure, you know, there's the hits and everything. But if you actually, you know, I mean, I know people that only listen to the hits. And they're just like, I love this. I'll repeat this a million times. But then if you go into, like, listening to a person's or a band's entire album, you'll find stuff that are kind of like, you know, things that you really, really like and that aren't the mainstream. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely a group that qualified for that. Um, I think one of my initial impressions of Bloodhound Gang, especially once, like, um, their... Was it was it their... What, what, our, our lovely hefty album... Hefty Fine? Co- our lovely album cover that's uh, behind us right now. That's Hefty Fine. Um, the, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like that was, like, the one that I was into the most. Oh, really? I, what... Th- not hooray for boobies. That oh, one's got hooray that, for boobies. That one's got the bad touch on it. That one's yeah, like the iconic. That is the iconic staple. one. Yeah. Nope. So what I was gonna say is like the neat thing about Bloodhound Gang, I thought, was like they seem to kind of cross over between genres in a really neat way. Uh for the time period that they were in, which I guess was well, I mean, we'll get more into like their yeah. in, their incarnation, which was Matt blew my mind with earlier today. Uh the like so they 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 vary from like electronic to rap you know rock like yeah into straight up punk rock music mm-hmm. yeah and so it's like it's it's neat to see like the way that they kind of just like yeah same they cross album. boundaries cross barriers and they've got like a really good mix they're eclectic they don't stick to one genre they bounce all over the place and they incorporate humor into whatever song that they're playing so Matt how did you first hear about and get into bloodhound gang bad touch mm. yeah do That's, you remember like where you were because I, I i it's weird i i remember exactly like oh my god the i first was in time my I heard, living room 
<clears throat> oh my god, you too? You remember too? <laughs> yeah, watching on MTV. I think we were in... Uh, I like want to say fifth grade. Yeah, I was like fifth or sixth grade in elementary school, and I remember listening to it on the radio for some reason in the, in the classroom. Wow. Oh. Yeah, and and just like uh, we knew that it was, you know, um, a, a like the subject material was something that was like you know too old for us uh, to understand. We kind of understood it because yeah. i think in sixth grade it, yeah we understood a little bit i, but I don't know if it was like just completely yeah like like i don't know if it was our upbringing specifically where i felt like we were always just a little like predisposed to like um <laughs> uh you know things that were probably like should have been over our heads like we understood yeah. it to an extent but not completely seeing it on mtv watching the music video mm. you get it it makes it click yeah so yeah it was weird to remember like sixth grade Mr. Pilates class. Um, just like, <laughs> <clears throat> sorry, I heard it as Mr. Pilates. I just, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what we were doing the entire time. We're like you and me, baby, <laughs> nothing but mammals. Yeah. Um, so that was definitely my introduction to bloodhound gang. I think Matt definitely was the one who got me into them more a little bit later on, especially when, uh, this next album came out with songs like, uh, Foxtrot, Uniform, Uniform Charlie, Charlie Kilo. Kilo, and there's so many, so many bops on that album. So uh, I think that's my big Bloodhound Gang album. But Matt blew my mind earlier today. You can you, the viewer, guess when Bloodhound Gang initially formed? Night. Yeah, they're from the eighties. Yeah, they are. They're before we were even born. <laughs> Which is insane. I'd like, like, I like to say by a lot, but not by that much. No, not by that much, <laughs> but enough that it was before we were born. And it's like, oh, shit, dude, that's crazy. Because suddenly they played as a different band name at that time in the 80s and everything. Then they changed maybe like 1990s to the Bloodhound Gang. They dropped their monikers of like hmm. a portion of their names and everything. Still kind of similar to what their names are at the moment, but... Subtle changes. They had a different name when they initially formed, which... Yeah. Oh, do I even have that accessible right now? I, I the Cumhound Gang? <laughs> no, the Cumhound Gang. Bang Chamber 8. Yes, Bang Chamber Bang 8. Chang <coughs> Thank you. Wait, oh, that, that was, was a name from 1980 yeah. to 1990, according yep. to Wiki. Yep, yep, yep. And then in 1990, that's where they made their definitive change to what they are now known as the Bloodhound Gang. And technically, they didn't even really have, like, their big hit until, like, 1995, which is crazy. And through that, that was mainly EPs, which is nuts. Yeah. And technically, they still, at that time, weren't really playing big shows. Technically, their first show was in Evil Jared Hasselhoff's, like, garage or whatever. Or, <laughs> like, something that Jesus. he was involved with. Reyes. Oh, yes. So, uh, so, question from your opinion, right? Yeah. Because, like... Uh, me, I'm also familiar with Bloodhound Gang because a lap dances so much better yes. than the stripper. That's spot. why I used to sing <laughs> at karaoke. <laughs> but uh, my question is, do you think for the popular audience that they're considered a one-hit wonder? Yeah, there are people that would consider them a one-hit wonder, especially if you don't know them for their other hits <laughs> and everything like that. Or technically, like, I mean, technically they had a 10-year gap between albums, like, one other, I want to say Hooray for Boobies was 2005 or something like that. Then guess what? Their other album was 2015 or so. Well, actually, not even that I mean, Hefty Fine late. was the Their later one. Hefty yeah. Fine, I want to say what, 2009? And then to, technically 2013, 2015 is where they were deemed defunct. But, like, the latest thing about them was done in 2017, and that was, like, evil Jared Hasselhoff talking about all the stuff that went on mm -hmm. that caused yeah, so, them to break up. Yeah, so, I'm not super up to speed on this, but this is a band that is the subject of some... Controversy. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm not, like, super up to speed on it, so I know that, like, um, they have upset some people. They're, they're a band that definitely, you know, tries to... Uh, yeah. Technically, not like as bad as line. blood on the d on the dance floor mm -hmm. controversy, or at least not to our <clears throat> knowledge. If there's anybody mm -hmm. out there that experienced anything like that, then 
definitely that's no bueno. Then we are definitely not gonna <laughs> so we're, talk highly about them. We're coming into this video from, yeah. from from like this is a band from our youth that we really enjoyed and is yeah. a lot of fun and definitely was yeah. like a big like comedic influence on us. Um, I think. I think like watching it like you, you like understand like Matt's approach to uh, you know to comedy and like his a sense of humor a bit as well. So maybe we should get into the first uh, video that we so. have, and then we could. So as as usual, uh, we usually get into like the songs that they're best well known for. So in case you're not familiar with Bloodhound Gang, um, when, when Matt, <laughs> this is not uh, that's the last one we had. <laughs> Where's Bor Bors against the machine? Yeah. <laughs> I just opened up that video again. <laughs> like, this... It's a video of a bean, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is a quite interesting video. Oh. <laughs> it's like I always have from now on I will always have that video on standby. I want that that is so funny. <laughs> I love Bor against the machine. So well, that's why it's video. Yeah. Bad Touch by Bloodhound Gang. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, 2000. <laughs> so this, this video is only 22 years old right now. Yeah, which is crazy. The thing about that, this is 22 years old. Holy crap. It's really disturbing. It's nuts. <laughs> Cause damn. So bringing out the chicas on stage. I mean, technically, this really does remind me of when I was watching stuff on MTV. Same kind of, like, camera quality, you name it. Like, anything like this just reminds me of MTV a lot. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> Even that, that's like early Britney Spears. Sure, yeah, it's definitely what they're channeling. Yeah. Getting two thumbs up. <laughs> oh, my God. Whoa! Yeah, they have a whole bunch of women on stage. They've got their little whip ready and raring to go on all of these women. T to talk and about his consent present. Uh, I was like, to talk about Jimmy Pop for a second. Like, I feel like he, he is like this cool com at least at this time. I, I don't know him yeah. as a person, but like he, he had the he has the vibes of like I want to say like a combination of like Trey Parker and like mm. Limp Biscuit. Yeah. Um, and maybe a couple of, like Tom Green, Andy Dick. Yeah. It's like a weird, like of that time period it's vibe that, that he captures like completely on his own. That's the other thing about Jimmy Pop is suddenly he doesn't really age because uh, I don't know. I mean, he looks young there. And then even later on when like their later albums came out, he yeah. still looked the same. Yeah. When we were checking all the different videos, uh, doing our homework for this podcast, you like, he, that hasn't changed significantly. No. Yeah. He's got good genes. That probably goes for the band in general, because, um... Baseball. Evil Jared Hasselhoff? Yeah, he always looks good without a shirt yeah. on. Yeah. Shirt on, shirt off. Oh, shirt boy. on, shirt off. Pants yeah. on, pants off. Yeah. I'm gonna try to keep it in the small screen in case YouTube is like, this is too sexual. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> oh, no, you Gucci. Uh, I, I I personally find this too sexual. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I think I added this to the outline. <laughs> oh uh, it, I'm sorry, but they do not sound at all like how they sound on the album. <laughs> I think they do. But I don't know if he's... Nah, I can't imagine him lip syncing. I think he's like a real American Idol quality level singer, personally. Yeah. It gives me... It, it's also... I don't know. It's it, it it's probably continued, but like I think of like the bands that we liked from this time period, including like Blink, who yeah. like they're punk rock. They're not expected to have like studio level quality vocals live, and that's okay. We, yeah. know, they they, they have they have personality on stage. Yeah. They have banter. You got the hype. That's the big thing. Is like having the hype mm. of seeing a band live. Plus, a lot of the times, I don't know. I feel like getting on video doesn't always capture their live performance. Because especially since this is 22 years old. It's yeah. 20, or yeah, shoot, 20, 2022. Oh, oh. Yeah, this is from the early 2000s. Definitely, you know, recording equipment's improved over time and everything. 22 years. I mean, at that time, we had what? GameCube, 2000, not even. Oh, geez. so Super Nintendo. Imagine N recording N on a Super Nintendo or N64. 
Yeah, back in 2000 when we... <laughs> never, I was, yeah. I was going to say something bad. we had 16-bit. Yeah, 16-bit. 16 16-bit? 16 uh, yeah. 16 bitch. Dang. Hey, what's up, man? Oh, my God. I have to find... Yeah, so if you weren't aware, that's the, like the big single that threw Bloodhound Gang like really onto the map in the late '90s slash early two. I guess it was probably early two thousands because that was two thousand itself. I feel like we were in maybe sixth grade mm, when that my, was like. That, big. That's what my brain uh, like. I was torn between fifth and sixth grade, but I I think it was like at the very very end of elementary school, where it's like we have nothing left to teach you. You are all wise. <laughs> L- listen to the radio and listen to Bloodhound Gang and La Macarena and um, whatever else was happening at that time period. Um, yeah. So, uh, regarding the Bloodhound Gang, uh, is there any other like? Uh, things that like made you realize this was a band that you really enjoyed and like you wanted to learn more about or is it just a matter of like you like that album and you wait until the next album came out before you um, mm. I was just wondering because I feel like you were always like really into them like yeah. ever since we became friends so yeah. I was wondering how like it got to that point I feel like I started with Hooray for Boobies I feel like that was everybody's intro into the Bloodhound Gang so that's their big album with the bad touch on it so yeah. the you and me baby song essentially so like after that I was I was always one of those people where it's like okay if you get one album and you really like it off a band then you know you gotta go full blown you sure. gotta get the rest of their albums and everything like that so then I would get like One Fierce Beer Coaster and uh what's the album about their fingers <laughs> 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 where actually it's got like the kids in america song where i was like oh my god i mm-hmm. wasn't even sure if that was a cover or they came up with it oh gee that's no, one no 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 we're the kids in america uh, oh. or they they just bought like the rights to that song and threw it on their album i i they must have been because like uh that song was even in digimon like he's an America song. So. But it's always like uh, that other song, Chickity China, the Chinese Chicken. Oh, Whoa. yeah, by Sugar Ray. No, yeah. Bare Naked Ladies. Bare Naked Why Ladies. Am I Bare Naked Sugar ladies, Ray. Yeah. Sugar Ray just helped produce Yeah, it sounds like something that'd be in Scooby Doo. Chicken, oh. the Chinese, the Chinese so re- Chicken. Uh, regarding, uh, I, w- I would say it's their next best, next biggest song, which is a Foxtrot uniform, Charlie oh, Kilo. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I feel like I remember that song came out. Um, the music video was something that was like. It was like right at our peak of teenage years because it's got Bam Majir in it. It's like dirty humor. It's very I, banana heavy. Yeah, banana heavy. It's Bam Majir driving a giant banana mobile. Yeah. And wasn't that video? It was banned by it was MTV. Was it? That I was watching on MTV two back in high school. There, 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 a lot. There was something. <laughs> so I was like, "Oh my!" There God. was something about it, like it's just like another piece of this band's controversy, where like that 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 video with like a banana mobile driving into things was too explicit for television, and I think was ultimately taken off or something along those lines. That's um, nuts. But this was a song that was so so catchy that we were all so into at the time. Matt even covered it with one of his bands at, <laughs> back in the day. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> oh, it, it's a really funny, catchy song, and uh, so that's the next video we're going to check out. So let's, talk, let's watch it and talk over oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and there's evil Jared Hasselhoff with his muscles all over yeah. the place. And he is evil, isn't Muzzle. he? Yeah. Especially since he wore that 666 shirt in the previous show. Oh, that was him? Yeah. Wow. He looked like Crazy Town Butterfly Guy in that <laughs> last video. <laughs> oh, Crazy Town. <laughs> Come on, lady. With the lap rocket. We just start singing karaokeing over the uh, granny axe with the gut locker <laughs> retrofit the pudding at Chula with the gut locker. Oh my god! No, the, I would love to see them live. Generally, a lot of the times when they would play live, it would be in Europe because they would be able to get away with a lot more stuff in Europe than they could in America. Fox trot. Uniform. <laughs> that was like your spoken word pre-course. 
<laughs> Be- no, 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 because um, like the last song I was listening to, "Bad Touch," was such like a, yeah. a lo- not that it was an electronic song, but it had elements to it. And this song was just like a straight up like pop punk song. Mm. I, I just remember being like <laughs> so surprising and catchy and. I just remember like replaying it constantly. Wow! In the in, really? in the aughts. Damn. Oh yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, no, I agree. I definitely listened to this a whole lot, especially this was at the peak where I was diving into all kinds of different artists and like really going into like, okay, I like them. I'm gonna buy all their stuff. Okay, I like them. I'm gonna buy all their stuff. So this is technically the time Ooh-la-la. at my life where I was collecting CDs as like my predominant way of. Indulging in media. <laughs> this is probably around the time where I was in the 300s of CDs before the 400s. Wow. Yeah. Now I'm into like the whatever amount now with iTunes. That's such a clever song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're military lingo. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're a military personnel, like, definitely you'll understand. Damn innuendos. Yeah. I feel like this one's even performed really well live. Yeah. This one's like way Yeah, this is a really good better. performance. Yeah. We're trying to figure out a good one to show, and uh, Matt decided this was a good one, and it definitely was a good choice. This is definitely from, clearly from like a music festival. Mm. Yeah, this is awesome. I would love to see them live. My God, I hope they come back. I think they're really funny. I mean, technically later yeah. on, there's their whole controversy in regards to Russia where they end up getting kicked out, and that's where they end up breaking up, but whatever. Maybe yeah, what? yeah. I, one of our videos is a little. Uh, <laughs> that one's a touchy issue at the moment because <laughs> of everything going on in current politics and current uh, geopolitical sphere yeah. uh, items. This episode being recorded in late February of I want to say 2022. Yeah, uh, shit sucks. Things that are going on right now, and we. We were trying to find live videos, and we found this one, and I was just like, Matt, is this should this one we should show? And Matt was like, yes. I'm like, okay. Yeah, of course. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah, Matt went full bait. He went, of course. Of and that, that's this one, right? Yeah. No. Oh. Maybe we're, I don't know. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> is it this, that's... No, fuck, shit, sorry guys, oh. sorry. This is, <laughs> is that what we're shooting? <laughs> no, that really is the, uh, sorry, that's the only video. Here we get the team up! <laughs> <laughs> That's, no, that's my best story, guys. Face <laughs> off! Pissing in the name of! <laughs> What's your name? I'm gonna oh, piss Bill. on your face! <laughs> <laughs> you get up there! <laughs> that's hard. It's just in my favorite, so it's so hard to get past it when it's I'm... That video is so funny. <laughs> if I saw that live, I don't want to be in the front row. That's all I want to <laughs> say. If I'm in the back area, I'm cool. If it's in the front area, I'm going to be upset. It's like SeaWorld with a shamu yeah. dived into a yeah. fucking tank of piss. Yeah. It's like, oh, like, no, I don't want to get wet. <laughs> yeah. The thumbnails are going to be a frame by frame of her squirting the pee. It's just you guys in different poses every episode. <laughs> so I can use it as clickbait every time. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> all right, so uh, let's chug along with uh, some of videos yeah. Thank you very is this uh, this must be from the same album it's a bad touch yeah the next one you guys have I sing all the time the one after this one yeah the one after this one okay cool I have a feeling I know which one that is <laughs> yeah all the fucking time Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I I forgot that this was another video that I was like, this one's not has not aged well. Should we include this? And Matt was like, yes. Oh shit! I said that to this one too. I don't remember. You talk- I didn't even remember seeing this one. And this was a, <laughs> did you play this one? Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> He talks about his grandmother with a stoma. Oh! Yeah, I didn't realize that's how it starts. Can you do that oh one more time? Ow! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so keep in mind, these things have not aged well. It's not okay to... 
make joke about of, these things on yes. at all, if, especially on stage in front of a crowd, because the crowd will probably throw hurl glass bottles at you. I mean, whatever. I mean, that's a thing. Yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> Don't fucking make me cut shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> And what has Bloodhound Gang done to you? It's reawakened something. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to this song driving to Matt's house today before we came over here. I was like, oh, this would be a really funny one. And then we found this video. I like his use of ACDC of a t-shirt. I think what is a good conversation is uh, there's times where you have to separate an artist from their actual yeah, work. big time. You yeah. know? Like, just because someone has an ass, they're like an asshole doesn't necessarily mean that they made, like, a bad song. Yeah. You know, someone who's, like, a shitty person can still make good music, but it doesn't mean you have to support them as a person. And that's the thing. Like, technically with the Bloodhound Gang, sure, they have their persona that they're, like, these college, like, jocks or, well, not, like, jocks. They're technically pretty nerdy to a degree. Right. So, but, you know, there's evil Jared Hasselhoff. He's kind of like the balance because he would be like the jockey personality, I feel. But regardless, you know, they have these personas where, regardless, they got like this college mentality. Sure. But American Pie esque. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're like the American Pie band. <laughs> they're like technically the epitome of America at this time. Where it's like, okay, huh, ah, whatever. That, uh, and, I don't know. I feel like they're a meme. I feel I, like they're technically, like, 1990s version of Oliver Tree. Yeah, like a poorly aged meme. Yeah. Like, like, exactly. It's like, we're watching this through the filter of, like, yes, this is something that was much, much earlier in this century. And it clearly has not aged in a way that society f deems acceptable. Big time. And we understand that. Um, and I'm sure if this band were to reunite and play songs, they would not have this no. type of humor because they would be, no. you know, immediately. I feel like they would have on the border of the humor, like where they could kind of like South Park esque, where South Park has their boundaries yeah, and everything. Yeah, I was thinking that. That's why it's like Trey Parker esque. Yeah. yeah. Where, you know, it's kind of like expected to a degree where it's like tolerable, where it's not like breaking the boundary, but enough where it's going to be acceptable and humorous because that's why I feel South Park does is that sure. they know where to cut the line, where the line is drawn and they don't cross that line ever. Sure, they have their moments where they make their like really edgy jokes, but they do it in a way where it's somehow deemed acceptable by everybody. Like, it's enjoyable enough that you're like, all right, sure, you know, I mean, technically it's like life in general because technically, I don't know. In the, I get oh what you're God. saying. I get what you're saying. Like, like where they, it's yes. like you got to be able to cut loose a little bit. Like, you can't take everything totally. so harshly. Yeah. But, you know, it's kind of like the generation that we're in right now uh, where we kind of got to be knowledgeable about where that boundary exists. So it's kind of like you're living on South Park's edge every single day. It's important to know where we came from so we can decide where we're going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the idea know. is like, we, we hope that if they were an artist today, that th they would like acknowledge, hey, like maybe that stuff wasn't good, but we're not going to do it. That's you know? what they did technically. Even Jared Hasselhoff did uh, later on say they regretted oh, what really? he did. Yeah. Oh, okay. And Finally, they were going on the if Donald Trump was impeached, they would reform in 2017. So since that was the thing, you know, definitely they didn't reform, of course, because he was able to fulfill his presidential duties of four years of service. <laughs> <laughs> Let's watch the next video, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my favorite episode of Life. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be the Z's so, favorite yes. episode. <laughs> The next artist is Greg V. Real. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't listened to his new song yet. Can that be the surprise video at the end? <laughs> yeah, if we, if we have time at the end, totally. Greg V. Real. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, so th <laughs> this next song, Bloodhound <laughs> Gang, is a song that uh, we definitely sang all the time in our youth, and it's really, really, really funny. Because yeah. it's they, they they seek to prove that it's really hard. It's really not that difficult to hard hard. Not really not that difficult to rhyme a word with this 
specific word. Hey, who? Why don't you get some bras up here? Some uh, girls. Yeah, what's the French for uh, bitches? Oh, yeah. Ignore this part. Ignore this part of their this performance. Is how it <laughs> Man, this was filmed <laughs> before they invented the light bulb. <laughs> uh, so bear that in mind. I love that orange amp. Yeah. It's would, very vibrant. If I could afford it, I would have had that amp. I think those amps are sexy. They're cool. And so it begins. What? What was up? <laughs> you okay? I'm not sure if he said something really bad. Oh, uh, really? Don't worry, they're about to sing a song about the V word. Yeah, that's fine. That's the main reason why they want all these women on stage, is so that way they have that amount of estrogen yeah. that they're comfortable enough to sing about this. In regards to the things that, like, we've talked about with other bands on this podcast, just in all, uh, like, fairness and continuity is, like, uh, reproducing their live sounds, mm -hmm. how, the, how the band sounds live, and it's, like, very clearly the band's playing everything live, and, yeah. like, it's all reproduced, and, and, you know, good on them for doing that. Uh, I would say this sounds pretty accurate so far. Yeah, no, and, and this is like watching a, a pop punk band playing live, like like Blink in like 2000. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Everybody's having a gay old time. That is cool, man. Did what? Oh yeah, friends you, get to Matt, see you them were live. Matt, you were cracking up at this part before. He's like, can I get a fuck you? Yeah. <laughs> can I get yeah. a fuck you? <laughs> oh my god. That's really fucking awesome. They are so funny. I would love to see them live. Again, I mean, I presume that they would grow just like we did in time and everything like that. Yeah, even though they were from the 80s. Yeah, yeah which is nuts that they were... Just starting up as a band that was going to be like a bigger band back in the late 80s. Then here they are now. This is another song that has like, you know, like rap elements to it. Yeah. They were kind of like the comedic version of Zebrahead because Zebrahead had, had the Zebrahead had the rock or punk rock yeah. vibe to it as Aww. well as the rap aspect to it. That's interesting because I was just thinking of Limp Bizkit. Wow, yeah. No, big time. Same Zebrahead thing. was the first album I bought with my own money. Really? Yeah. Zebrahead? No, At that concert we went together. Oh, that's oh, funny. Oh, the one that was oh, the, uh, broadca Donkey? broadcast yeah. to the world. Yeah. That's, I, I really like that album. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Can I get a fuck you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, the one thing that I was surprised by was how ska they are live. In yeah. comparison to how, like, you know, like, synth heavy they are when it comes to the studio yeah, version of it and everything. It's another genre you can add to their repertoire. Yeah. It's kind of funny how. Um, I feel like the personality of the band is with Jimmy Pop and Eva Jared Leto. Um, <laughs> yeah. <at laughs> Dancing in front of a mirror. Yeah. <laughs> but, and then I don't know too much about the rest of the band, and I feel like they're just sort of like having fun and going along with their thing. Like the drummer is cool and like does a good job. And same thing with the, uh, the guitarist. Oh my god. Yeah, this whole album is just throwing me back. Yeah. Especially from hearing this song. This is nostalgia. We just found out that the mall from our youth is about to close. So. Sorry, yeah. mall. <laughs> Bye. R.I.P. That mussy. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, I was planning on walking through that mall when I was out of leave, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. not. That's poor. Not anymore. I hope that they... Wait until those mall walkers leave before they demolish. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, what's happening? I would love it if they just turned into a giant track. <laughs> oh, that, that, <laughs> that'd be great. Like, it's too cold. <laughs> and then that'll be us before we know. Like, <laughs> that'll be a it's heat too track. fucking cold. Yeah. It's just a giant LA fitness. <laughs> 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 we have to pay to just walk inside? Yeah. Oh, that'd be really disappointing. 
The new problem with me in my 32nd year of life is like my I just get like so numb and like my fingers oh go Oh my god, down. like Lincoln Park. I become so numb. Oh my god. Yeah. And and so it's like I f I understand the value of finding a nice warm and in indoor place to walk. That was a really good song and live performance. Yay! Oh my God. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Welcome to uh, <laughs> live and let be geriatric. All right. I yeah. like geriatrics. Yeah. Uh, Jerry, are you guys uh, ready to go to an ad break? I think so. I think we're prime and ready for a little ad break or such. <laughs> We're going to go to an air break. We'll see you in a little bit. Bye. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. I can't believe that, like, we've listened to a good chunk of Bloodhound Gang stuff. But you know what would probably make Bloodhound Gang way more awesome? Uh, you got to tell me. I don't know. Maybe some CBD. Oh my god, but like where can I obtain CBD to like, you know, really f uh, feel like relaxed, maybe like me like help me with my headaches and my, you know, inflammation. And Delta 8? No! Oh. Yeah, they have Delta 8s on there. Oh, <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah, that was Delta 8s. Where you can get these items is from uh, www.spaceandbonus.com Forward slash Vance. Vance is our CBD sponsor. They make really awesome products. They have CBD and Delta 8 items if you're interested in the Delta mm. 8 variety items. And Delta 8s make you feel good. CBD help you sleep and make you feel good later on in the morning. So go on to www.vance.com spaceandbony.com forward slash Vance and get your CBD and Delta 8 related <laughs> items today. Are you going to do them? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Guys, I've been having this weird problem at my house. See, uh, every time the power goes out, I want to investigate ghosts, but I don't have equipment to do so. Shit. Where the fuck would you get stuff to investigate ghosts from? Yeah. Do you guys know? I was hoping you guys would know. Do you want me oh. to say? Oh, <laughs> I heard something about this. <laughs> www.spaceambony.com. You guys want to retake that? <laughs> no, no. Okay, I'll leave it. <laughs> Kyle, what's the website? <laughs> Kyle, what's the website? <laughs> I honestly don't remember. <laughs> Go stop! <laughs> I should have written it. Guys, I'm having this weird problem with. I was probably short term function. memory. <laughs> guys, guys, I've been having this weird problem with ghosts in my house, and I've been thinking about using the ghost stop to get some equipment. What do you think about that? I think that's fucking Ooh. awesome. Ghost stop is cool. They've got EVPs, they've got anoles. Guys, I've been having this weird experience in my house. Every time the power goes out, I want to investigate if there's ghosts in my house, but I don't have equipment. Whoa. Hey, you know you know what, might, what, what, what might, might be a good idea, Alex? What, what, why, what, what would that be? You should go on SpaceZamboni.com slash ghost stop, and you should probably go on that and find all the ghost hunting equipment you would ever need. That'd be sick to get all the ghost hunting equipment that you could ever need <laughs> <laughs> on one website? Why? Oh my gosh, so you tell me they got like voice recorders, you got like EMF detectors, they got like everything on there. They do. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, <laughs> can you tell me that link one more time? <laughs> www.spacezamboni.com slash forward slash slash go stop. Go stop. Dot Go stop! Don't. What? Oh my god! I'm going to look at it right now before you guys say anything else. <laughs> oh my I'm god! Please do! Right no! no. <laughs> okay! Okay, so that's it for the ad break, and we'll see you right back with the podcast. Welcome Hello. back, everybody. Uh, so, when you think about the Bloodhound Gang, um, there's another, um, of the certain time period, a uh, piece of media that I think about, and I'm guessing it's our next video. If not, then maybe mm -hmm. we'll go out of war. Uh, it, it's uh, <laughs> The Simpsons. Oh my god, yes. The golden age of The Simpsons. It was a little past. Anyway, it. My, anyway. The, the Even at Niage video, 
uh, in my opinion, was like, okay, The Simpsons is probably like that. That was like the end of the golden era of The Simpsons. Like, wow. we were like the Ralph Wiggum joined the Navy and like all the. Yeah. I was thinking the Tony Hawk episode. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. The yeah. Tony Hawk episode. Yeah, they're all like maybe like at the tail end or even like a step past the tail end. I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, so. I remember all, all the the even at Niaj was like the kids were like in a boy band or something yeah, yeah, and they were they're, doing the yeah they had like in sync on or that mm-hmm. time or whatever yeah that was her guest who just knows what they're saying and I was like by the time I watched this I already heard this Bloodhound Gang song <laughs> it's weird because because I think I I got into the Simpsons a little late and I was really uh, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. And I think I heard this song before I was like really like super into The Simpsons, which, you know, this video itself is from 2009, and that's still quite a while ago at this point. Wow, I remember watching The Simpsons. You knew about the. the, You you knew about the Evenet Niage stuff, though, before. Oh, yeah, because I was watching The Simpsons religiously at that time. (laughs) Yeah, well. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. (laughs) I heard that reference. Oh! They're all in loop for failure. Yeah, I was watching The Simpsons for like ever. Up yeah, until no, like college. I, yeah, no, I mean, I was super into Futurama, but then like The mm. Simpsons, I caught up on a little bit later. But then I watched the, I got the DVDs and watched them so many times over. Um, so, I think this is the video that's going to require a little explanation. The about the Evenet Niaj and Ralph Wiggum? No, in that we could probably skip th- oh, three uh, minutes in be- before oh, yeah, the song even true. starts. Yeah, this is the one that involves the whole uh, intro, I- the intro that is extremely relevant to today. It I, seems like I can't see the timer. Tell me when I'm at like three minutes, please. No, you're you're going backwards. You're only at like one minute. Oh, you mean like three minutes back? No, when I'm when I'm at the spot you guys want. Oh, I can't see the timer. For I me. would I would say just go about halfway. And we'll see if the song's okay. even started at that point. Sure. Uh, uh, I think that's fair. Okay. So as we're aware, this is a song that Bloodhound Gang released that is completely com- uh, Ralph Wiggum Simpsons quotes. I wonder what like the you know, like it must have been like Simpsons fans and like yeah, you, oh you, my god you even went with like uh, quotes that were like from the. 2000s and like it was, it was cool yeah oh my god the bloodhound gang is so funny this uh, again off their album they're f- close the second to last album or technically third to last if you count their hits album that was recently released <laughs> it's from their album hefty fine yeah so let's listen to the live performance of ralph wiggum from bloodhound gang that's fine <laughs> And as you can see, you get that delicious cell phone quality that everybody loved back in the day. <laughs> that you could expect from Live and Let Jive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at him licking on that bass. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't always allowed to... Re- I mean, generally, a lot of their performances later on in their uh, tenure <laughs> is... Outside of America, because suddenly they weren't able to really do the antics that they do in Europe. That, yeah. Yeah. I, I, so I was curious about that because that was like an old memory that like came to me when we were saying like this is a band that we talk about today. I was like, wasn't Bloodhound Gang, I wasn't sure if they were like banned from playing America or if they were just like discouraged from playing in America. That's why all these videos are like from Germany, from even Russia and yeah, just like Norway. all international in general. UK. Oh my god, yeah. Because they'll generally invite, like, fans on stage and everything and, like, either urinate or defecate or do something crazy on stage. And that's why America's like, no, that's too crude. That's America. Yeah. Can't do that. I guess Canada, too, because I don't really see that many tours in Canada, either. Yeah. Generally, a lot of times if they were playing in America, it was early on when they, like, started getting big, and it was in, like, small venues. It wasn't, like, large venues like this one. Sure, of course. Ralphie! Get off the stage, the stage, stage sweetheart! Sweetheart! Anyways. Oh, say, can you rock? Rock! Oh, Who's my. that guy? 
Oh, 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 he's their guitarist. I, he's like the first time he showed up in any of our videos. Like, oh yeah, he is the guitarist. Hey, as you get bigger, you just get more people on stage. That's uh, what's what's with, it with bassists and chains? I don't know. Chains are cool. I wear chains. Yeah. That way I don't lose my keys. Does this guy own a shirt or every performance no shirt? No, no, no when he wore shirts earlier on. No, not when he was as bulky as he is there. I'm like, Rup. I think we have just a couple of videos left for Bloodhound Gang. I think the next one, which is um, one of our last couple, uh, is something from when Matt suggested that we talk about Bloodhound Gang this episode. For some reason, this was a video that popped into my head, and so I, I was like, I don't, I, I hope this is like a fun video for other people to watch. And if it sucks, we don't need to watch the whole thing. But it just like popped into my brain because when I became a fan of the band Weezer back probably in like 2008. I saw bands that covered them, and this is neat because it's a video that is only from 1997, so it's like it was only three years after Weezer's first album was released, so it's like before, you know, you like like things became memes and, and whatever, uh, long before that. And uh, there's another quirk to this. Oh, this video's not even that long either, so that's good too. So I won't overstay its welcome. <laughs> And I and you'll see what it is soon enough. So um, another so this might be the first time we've watched a cover on this podcast. Oh damn! So I wanted to ask you, Matt, because it's like another like in terms of like live music. How do you feel about bands playing cover songs? I'm At, okay with the cover as long as it sounds good. That, that, that that's what it is. Like it just as long as it's yeah. like, as long as it's good, sounds good. Is there anything that like makes you enjoy it? I feel like if the band is really cringe, like one way or another, the, the then one that's, that's where it ruins The one it. that's playing the cover song or the, or the yeah. one that's being covered? Nah, the one that's covering the song. Yeah. Like if it's a really good older song, it's like, oh man, I really like that song. But then if it's by like a band that kind of sucks, <laughs> one way or another, that's like, oh man, <laughs> they shouldn't sing that song. <laughs> Then I feel dirty listening to it. I'm like, I can't listen to uh, Hypothetically, this. what about a band that has like a lot of songs inspired by a certain band and then plays music from the band they're inspired by? I don't know. If they're good, I'll listen to it. If they suck, <laughs> sorry. They suck. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> <laughs> My personal opinion, and it's not like it, I feel 100% about this, but I want the band playing the cover to at least put their own personal spin on the mm -hmm. song. Like, I think it's cool when you cover a song and you give your own vibe, like, um, or like you add something extra, an extra oomph that wasn't in the original version that, you know, people could appreciate in this live performance. Yeah. Um, if you're just straight up, like, trying to replicate the original song, then that's not super my jam. Like I don't hate it, you know, per se. But if like you go through the extra effort to do something extra, then then that's what makes, in my opinion, a cover uh, really something special. What if Train covered Beverly Hills? So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I gotta watch my words. <laughs> I gotta say, neither of those are desirable. <laughs> I don't want anyone to cover a song that's a bad song covered by a band that, so far, I have not bent one over. Let's just say that much. What if Fagasio Below covered Greg B. Real? <laughs> <laughs> good well, good for them. I don't need to. Yeah. Do it. Oh. <laughs> I, I would have to say I'd gotta listen to them both. <laughs> I guess stay tuned if you want to hear what we're talking about in terms of this person. Oh, God. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Sure. Cool. So, <laughs> let, so so this is an example of a band covering another band, but then giving a little extra oomph, in my honest opinion. Maybe not the way you'd expect, but you'll see. Thank you very much. Now, I know you've been here for a long time, and y'all smell like shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I love the Italian noise that they smell like shit. Do 
Yeah, it takes a little bit for them to like really get into the part that I'm talking about. I think it's still like weird that this is only a few years after the song was released. They must have just been like, this is the pumped up kicks of 1997. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> for some reason, this is what popped into my head. This is exactly how I remember this song being played. So if anything, then I got... I think this one has the original beat. This one really hits the notes says how I pictured the original should have hit the notes. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, it's a very faithful cover, I guess, yeah. in retrospect. <laughs> the audience looks so fucking bored. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? They ch their brains have been turned into, like, gruel because they don't even know what to do because the song is so cool. <laughs> There they go. There's the real fans. There's in there. It's really funny because it's like actually like <laughs> they want to play this song live. Oh, they're doing the Wu Tang Clan thing yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh. oh. I, I didn't realize that that was in this version. Alex, here's your face. Remember this. <laughs> yeah, cut it. <laughs> Do a deep cut. I don't remember that part specifically. They're so politically correct. But this is before they grew as people. <laughs> this is before they did that. This is before they did Phineas and Ferb. This is before they grew as individuals. <laughs> So as you can see, this no is a respect. cover. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is a cover that adds a lot of extra oomph, and maybe it has an age like super well. But you could at least tell like the time period that it came out of, and the audience is clearly thrilled. Yeah. He any moment now. Oh, he looks hurt. Any moment now, he's about to jump out there and start sucking yeah. on their fingers. Man, <laughs> that's crazy. Whoa. Yay. Wow, that was a nuts and poor performance. Oh, hey, what's up, man? Oh! A nuts performance. I don't know, I lost my brain cells. Wh which part of him am I touching right now? Kind of his leg. Oh, do you want me to do full screen? No, I gotta do the small one. The fat All man? Right, lift up, Look, go up, go up, go up a little more. There, oh, down a little bit. Down a little bit. Yeah, that's the spot. That's uh, the spot. sweet the painter. <laughs> the painter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he likes that. Yeah. Oh, my God. He ain't blinking. All right, everybody, so uh, we're winding down with our episode. We only have a couple uh, videos left. Uh, it, it's always fun when you go to a live show and they do something uh, unexpected yeah. and uh, creative to uh, just make the audience have a, have a good time. And so that's why um, when Matt stumbled upon this video, I was like, oh, this is definitely one that we should include. And as um, you can see probably in the preview behind us, they're wearing some fun helmets with some <laughs> drums. Oh my god! It. Yeah, yeah. and it, it also showcases the drummer's abilities at the same time. It's like it's funny, but at the same time, it's actually pretty freaking cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a really, really short video. So I think we should just watch it and check it out. <laughs> oh, pretty when I'm drunk. Yeah. yeah. And when I got this album and heard this song, I was like, I love this song. <laughs> this is my favorite song. <laughs> and I'm pretty drunk. Yeah, well, I'm relaxed out of fear. Looks like How he's wearing like, a wear hockey that jersey. For? What's up? How long do they wear that for during the performance? <laughs> I don't know. I presume like a good chunk of the performance. That's crazy. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I know that was just... I, oh, hey. <laughs> <clears throat> I like even though that was just like a snippet I like that the drummer yeah. himself was wearing his own symbol <laughs> so it's like who was hitting that one <laughs> all right um so what what's left we got one final video and it's the final video. before I knew that we were going to have a final final video it's like the p what do you call it like, like there's the ps but that and then there's like the pss the, PP, the oh. pss is it PPS or PSS? PSS. I need my my elementary school education or again. Or PPS. I gotta go back to sixth grade. 
Yeah, anyways, before I knew that we were going to have, like, an additional <laughs> final video, uh, it was actually, like, this is a band that has a lot of personality, a lot of live banter, so um, it only seemed um, relevant to actually have, like, one of their own videos be, like, our um, fun, uh, prior irrelevant, but this time relevant, uh, last video, so... Without further ado, this is Bloodhound Gang themselves. Um, yes, as you, as this title implies, um, <laughs> it, it says bass player. That's a that that is uh. Yay, evil our bo- Jared Hassel. Hassel Hassel off. Yeah, he's gonna he, he's gonna chuck some stuff, and then we'll see what's gonna happen. Chuck, 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 chuck. <laughs> no shirt again, I see. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what's gonna happen because the title didn't play anything. Oh no! <laughs> oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Are they booing him? I think so, a little bit. <laughs> oh no! Oh my god! <laughs> I didn't know he was going to. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> that could have been a show, I guess. Yeah. But that oh was really my funny. God. <laughs> that was really good. Ah, uh, the That was game. fucking gross. What? It's it's gross but important. Yeah. To understand Bloodhound Gang, if this is a band that were to come back in the mid twenty twenties or the beyond, it's a band that we would, is this a band that you would want to see? I would want to see it just to have the experience, just to go through the experience, see what they do or what they could get away with on stage and everything, because their European shows I hear are insane. So really? if anything, I would kind of want to see them probably in Europe. If I ever travel outside the U.S. in some point in my life. Then yeah, I would, if they're touring, I would, they would probably be one of the big shows I would want to see outside of the U.S. I gotcha. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, I I feel like a lot of the stuff that you watch was very with the times, and so um, it's like the things that maybe then were like edgy and you know potentially pushing the edge now are just completely unacceptable. And mm. like, I think if they were to reunite, they probably wouldn't be on that, you know, yeah, pushing edge boundaries level. type of level. Mm-mm. Um, and you know, they, they would find the new place to be at, which, you know, who's to say like where we're at now will age in the future. Uh, so, uh, like that said, like, I th- I find them a completely entertaining bands. Like they're obviously comedy, like, like they are for the sakes of entertainment. Uh, I think their music is really fun. The, the, and as we said before, I like the different qualities of like punk versus electronic and apparently even like ska elements to some of their songs. Yeah, I'm surprised about that live element. A lot of their stuff is ska because generally they're kind of like Europop. Oh, uh, yeah, especially since that's where they play a lot of their mm-hmm. live shows. Um, yeah, so yeah, if uh, Blood Out Gang ever decides to come back, um, just like a lot of the bands that had broken up in the past have you know found their ways back um they just announced like firefly my chemical romance is playing at it so it's like that's crazy yeah these bands these gropey bands are coming back so who's to say that'd be nice who's to, see to, that to say who's to who's say? say as a wise man once said <laughs> yeah before a paranormal investigation <laughs> yeah i'm scared <laughs> it said no <laughs> it said no all right, so I think we're finishing up, yeah, which damn, means that crazy. we have one last thing to watch. It's, and it's the final video. I have not seen this before, and is, so is this just a song? What's what is this? Yeah. So as context, there's no actual music video, and I can't play the full thing because we could get claimed Copyright. on this for sure. We actually got claimed on the last one too, but whatever. Dang. Yeah. Uh, but this, I'll have to play snippets of this. But uh, this is a very profound uh, Catholic actual song. Ooh. So this is uh, officially in. in I, I saw the poster, which is very um, uh, Jesus. 
Yeah, this artist is he's, now new to Christian rock, but uh, this is an artist I think me and Matt both really like uh, appreciate. We keep up with their tracks, and, and we're very yeah. knowledgeable on their stuff. Yeah, yeah, only the two of you, definitely not me. They're <laughs> underground. I'm, I, I'm definitely completely unfamiliar with this artist. And don't listen. So to are we? We never heard a single <laughs> one of their songs. Yeah. <laughs> definitely Neff. not. I did. I, I may have been born today, but I woke up yesterday. <laughs> Dang. Ah. What oh. the heck? Yeah, wait, why is the... No, I, I'm just listening to, to the piano. Yeah. Kind of chilly. <laughs> Feeling breezy. <laughs> Do you like chilly... Cause chili's good in your mind. Yes. Yeah, so set up like a really nice foundation. Chili I'm going to skip a little good. into the song just to not Sure, sure, too sure. Much. But, uh, let's go about. <laughs> you there. Yeah, you there. Let's That's go. the end. Yeah, let's just skip to the very, very last there second. Go. Oh. <laughs> oh. I love this song. <laughs> This song is good to me. You right, Mr. Alex? Mr. Alex, this is your favorite song. <laughs> What's going on? What? He's just so emotional. Oh, yeah. It's See, probably I have the this tears. reaction in certain Christian rock songs. It just hits me right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I feel that. I mean, the spirit of Jesus is exuberant, yo. Um, yeah. <laughs> what? Just you singing it. I don't know why you. Would if sing. you'd like to know more about Jesus Christ, um, yeah, go to your local library. Go to your local library. If you want to hear more about Jesus, go to the go to a soup kitchen. <laughs> He's in every single serving of soup. There's a little bit of Jesus in there, a little bit of yeast. <laughs> there is in soup. If you go to a soup kitchen. I can't so, wait to listen to this song in fall. <laughs> I love this song. Everybody, this thank you so much for listening yeah. and watching this episode live in Led Jive. I had a really good time. I don't know if you did. I Of course. I always have a good time when I'm around you bros. Bro. Bros. <laughs> Uh, so uh, thank you so much for watching. Hey, I um, should always say um, if there's any specific live uh, performances or artists that you think that we should talk about on this show, please uh, feel free to comment. Uh, join the Space Zamboni Discord and let us know in there as well. Uh, because if you do, then we'd totally be enthusiastic about it and check it out for sure. Hell yeah. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. if the bands have... <laughs> Politically correct and cool. <laughs> totally, bro. No, so it, um, <clears throat> uh, with that said, th thank you so much for watching this episode. Um, yeah, it was a really good time, and we, yeah. uh, we'll, and we'll see you soon. And we hope you enjoy the Bloodhound Gang. Check out their songs. Unless you don't enjoy some of their songs, then check out another band. <laughs> we love you. Bye. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.